The winter lights are on and it's time to set up a planning system for the new year coming up. Exciting times! This video is all about setting up my new planner, reviewing what worked and what didn't in the past year, and implementing solutions to make the most of this precious instrument. I'm also gonna go through the planners of my previous years to give you more tips and ideas, and I'll show you my complete planning system for productivity and progress tracking for 2025, always making sure it's fun, dramatic and romanticized. Cause you know, Italians. So make sure you stay until the end and take a lot of notes. Hi everyone, this is Carlo and welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to finally unpack my Loistum 1917 for 2025 and as I like to do every year, have a nice tactile session with its smooth pages and the little papers and labels that it comes with. The stationery lovers will relate to this. But most of all, I love to set up and personalize the planner to make it my own and make sure it will really work for me in terms of helping me to stay productive, motivated and organized and play a very important part in my everyday life. I made a video last year about my three top tips to set up your planner and I'm gonna reference it during this video, but this time I'm gonna delve deeper and show you step by step all my setup process. Starting with page one, the front page, it's very important that we fill in our details on this page in case we lose our planner and we want people to reach out if they find it. Go for name, email address and optional telephone number. Don't write your home address. Never ever. It's full of weirdos out there. I advise to decorate it a bit. Not too much, but take some time to make it personal. I like to do this so that it can reflect my personality and also because if I lose the planner and someone finds it, they might think, oh, he really made an effort to decorate it, so he must really care, and be more inclined to return it to me. Browsing on, the first proper page that we meet is a calendar view of the whole year 2024, the year that has just finished. And I use this to make a migration of important dates from this year's planner. So I literally go through this year's planner and migrate all the important dates, data and events that I want to remember onto this page of the new planner. For example, when I went on holiday, when I started a new job or a new project, when I had friends visiting and anything that I want to remember in the new year. Any data that I want to be able to recall in the future, it can be for tax reasons or for future reference or for simple curiosity, will now be on this page at the start of my new planner. So I will not need to retrieve the old planner and frantically search because I have the entire previous year on this page at a glance. A migration is something that I always recommend to do. It always worked and always proved to be very useful. Migrate now and thank me later. The next pages of my Loistum have also a full calendar view of 2025 and 2026. And if you already have important dates lined up, feel free to block these dates on these pages already and you will be super organized. Some of these calendar pages at the start of the planner might seem like a useless repetition, but they are actually an opportunity for us to plan and track different things in different ways. Here we have a monthly view of 2025 in columns, and this year and the year before I tried to use it as a content calendar, keeping track and planning the videos I posted on YouTube and my Instagram content. I think it's a good idea to do the same this year, but I want to make it more flexible. So I'm gonna write in pencil the content that I want to post and rewrite it with pen once I post it. So I can always switch things around if I see that something is not gonna be feasible in time and I'm going for a plan B. I'll tell you more on this later. So yes, content calendar it is, but if you're not a content creator you can use these pages to plan and schedule blog posts, newsletters, events of any kind. If you're organizing your wedding or you're starting a new business, oh my god, these pages are gold because they are the perfect monthly logs to plan a whole year months in advance. I'm gonna keep flicking through the pages of my Loistum and next we have this project plan spread, basically a horizontal monthly view with daily little cells that are of course too small to write anything inside but they can be colored in or ticked off. That's why last year I decided to set it up as a habit tracker. I chose four habits that I wanted to keep track of. And every day I would put a dot in the cell if I managed to progress with the habit. Did this work? No, it didn't. I've abandoned it after a week, maybe. I know, right? This is a honest channel. 
I don't only want to share my wins, but also my little failures, because we are just human after all. But this year, I want to give it another try, because I think I understood the two main reasons why this didn't work. First one, I chose four habits that were totally independent and disconnected. One was a professional one, one was about personal branding, one was a health habit. So this time I want to use this project plan as a wellness tracker and keep track of four habits that pertain to the same field. I can choose up to four habits here, so I'm gonna track the days I go to the gym, the days I do mobility exercises, because I'm not getting any younger, I need to protect those cartilages. The yoga classes I managed to do and the habit of having green smoothies daily. Another reason why this didn't work is that I ended up forgetting that these pages were even there. We live very busy lives and it can happen that all of a sudden you realize, oh, I haven't updated my habit tracker in days. And then it's difficult to remember the days gone by and you fall out of it. And For this reason, a crucial part of setting up our planner is to create an indexing system with tabs that will act as visual cues to remind us that certain pages are there every time we look at the planner. I took a sturdy piece of card and cut little rectangles of 2 cm by 1.5. I added a little color and rounded the corners on one of the sides. Once I wrote the tab's titles, I used the magic tape to laminate them so they'll survive a year of London weather. And I stuck them on my content calendar and my wellness tracker pages. You can trim them a bit if they stick out too much. And there you go! Don't underestimate the power of indexing. Life-changing, I tell you. Speaking of visual cues, a thing that I love to do when I write on my planner is color coding my activities. It's something I started doing years ago during lockdown, and I find it super useful to have a thorough idea at first glance of how I spend and divide my time. I usually assign a highlighter color to a particular category of activities, and I use this pairing throughout the year. I'm currently using my Stabilo Nature colors with this nice autumn winter palette. So I recommend you to create your own color palette and coding system and stick to it. Or another idea is to change this color palette according to the seasons. For example, for spring and summer I want to switch to a brighter pastel palette. And I revert back to the current one when next autumn will start. The use of color in our planner, besides being a great visual cue, really helps boosting our overall mood. It makes planning more fun and it makes us generally feel better. Exactly like I feel happy every time I get to accessorize my new planner. This year I want to make a large use of stickers to decorate my pages, so I picked a little selection that I always want to carry with me in the back pocket of my Loyster planner and replenish them when I run out. I recently found in Muji these super essential sticky notes that are so luxuriantly minimalistic. They are translucent so they can be applied on written pages without completely covering the text underneath. And they are nice and thin, it's not a bulky pad of notes. So I'm gonna glue them to the inside cover of my planner to always have some ready to use when I'm on the go. Another accessory that I absolutely loved on my planner this year, to the point that I added two, is this adhesive pen loop, still from the Leuchtturm brand, that allows you to carry a pen attached to the planner. I currently have a pen and a pencil, but for the new year I'm only gonna add a pen, because I always carry a pencil anyway with me in my little pouch that I use for sketching. If your planner doesn't have a pen loop, buy one from Leuchtturm, it's cheap and very useful, and pretty much universal for any kind of planner. I've also added more tabs to mark the starting point of every month, which makes it even easier to find a particular date. I know this is a bit extra, but hello, have you met me? So the year hasn't started yet and my planner is already getting chunkier. Let's talk about the blank notes pages that are at the end of the planner. We've seen last year how these pages, often neglected, are instead very useful for goal mapping. I've always loved at the start of every year to write down my goals and resolutions, but I was only able to see amazing results when I started mapping the goals with this method that I'm gonna show you. First, define the areas of your life where you want to set your goals. For example, here I have my art business. 
but also my YouTube channel, my physical wellness and my mind and soul personal development. For every area I chose a goal, but you can choose more if you want. For my art, the goal will be to establish my activity. After you set the goal, they construct it into two or three mid goals. Less abstract, more in detail, more achievable. In order to establish my art, I need to create more, to become known as a painting artist and to make a profit that can at least allow me to reinvest the money that I make into the business. So yes, area, general goal, mid goals. Now for every mid goal, we write two or three actionable steps that will help us achieve the mid goal. It's important here to focus on actions that we can do and not to something that is out of our control. Don't fall into the trap. For example, for the mid goal of becoming a known artist, I will not write reach 10,000 followers because it's out of my control. Like I cannot control how many people will follow me. Instead, I'm writing share online more consistently, search for venues where to exhibit, and network more. All things that I can do and I can be accountable for. That's very important. Once these steps are written down on our planner, they are with us for the whole year, and we know we have to work on these steps in order to achieve step by step the main goal. This year I also succeeded in going back to reading books during my train rides to work instead of scrolling social media. And I love to keep track of the books that I read, gluing little covers on this book tracker. So I'm definitely gonna do the same this year. I'm gonna set up the tracker on the new planner and maybe also start a reading journal on a pocket notebook where to copy quotes and annotations about the next books that I read. I'm just throwing a lot of ideas at you. Feel free to tell me to shut up at any time. So my planner is pretty much all set up now. This year I decided to use also this monthly notebook by Muji to plan and organize exclusively the creation of my YouTube videos and keep track of the progress of my channel. And I'm gonna show you now how I use it. Let's do a mock week as an example. A week in the life of a part-time YouTube creator. First I'm gonna date these cells from Monday to Sunday. I bought in Muji this chunky white washi tape that is pre-perforated and allows you to cut little squares that are coincidentally the same size of these cells. So I'm gonna use them as little sticky notes. Let's say I wanna block 5 days over this week to create a new video. And I'm gonna provisionally write the tasks to complete on every single day, from writing the script, to filming, to editing, to uploading. Now I'll show you how this will communicate with my main planner. On my content calendar page, I've written in pencil what I want the next videos to be. I know I have to divide the work across these five days, so I allocated this time on my planner, color coding it in orange. At the end of every day, after I completed the tasks, I remove the washi note and write permanently on the cell what I've achieved on that day. And I also write down the subscribers count on that day, to keep track of the channel's growth. As the week progresses, if I realize that I have to switch a couple of days around, I do it easily because washi tape is removable and repositionable. Just don't stick it super hard on the page. Dedicating a mini planner like this one to a particular project really helps keeping us motivated and on point. And it will be a very nice journey story of our progress and reflect the hard work that we put into it. That's all for today. I hope this video gave you not only a glimpse into my way of organizing and planning my life, but also some ideas to implement for your system. Let me know in the comments below, also if you have any suggestions. I love when we share ideas in the comment section. If you like this video, feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe if you haven't already. This was me, Carlo, and a new video is coming soon, but in the meantime, take care, be kind and see you soon.